Hello, uh, you know who I am. Your resident friend, Keikaku-chan. I'm not here to invade this show, as this all happened years ago. My friends from good old Massachusetts lured in some of the most clueless fans to ever have, well, this world. So let's see what they had unfurled. as a brony during middle school, but that was before Lauren Faust left the show and I myself left the fandom before it got really, really toxic. Though I still adore friendship is witchcraft. Fight me! I watched him sleep in bed at night. It's not creepy. But do you know another controversial entity that I admire? Kickstarter! Oh, Kickstarter, one of the greatest examples of capitalism in action. Yeah, some good things come out of it, sure. Like in a heartbeat and potato salad? Okay then. If you dig deep enough though, you can see that a significant number of successful Kickstarter campaigns were started by rather well-off people like Amanda Palmer and Zach Braff. We'll get to that side of Kickstarter another day. But on the other hand, or hoof, you've got scammers. A decent number of people on Kickstarter try to take your, hopefully, well-earned money and promise you big incentives! And then they disappear and not give you a refund. Yay! And sure, sometimes it's fun to see schmucks fall for that shit. But nothing, nothing compares to the train wreck we'll be talking about today. Dark Skies. Dark Skies is an epic brody dating sim. And that's not me using hyperbole. They literally advertised this game as epic by Psychoactive and Liquid Dream Games, who wanted an original pony dating game to be brought out into the world. It's PG-13, perfect for the hornier fandom members and has every single dating sim character imaginable. You have the smart girl, the email with daddy issues, a uh, milf, a gay soft boy, the bohemian from Arizona, the bohemian from Oregon, the AD's high school bully, the, um, uh, I really don't. No. The girl who thought Lolita was a love story, a transgender pony, the dominatrix, the stoner, the future sugar baby, and more apparently. But people were suspicious of the game from the get-go. Not only was it unplayable, despite being 95% complete, there was no real word on how the money would be used, and they had a very bizarre trailer with this squid thing and some of the worst audio mixing I've ever heard. I'm starshine. I guess I'm the type of pony who's always staring off into space. They also promised way too much for what was supposed to be a dating simulation, such as weapons and fantasy role-playing? What? Soon enough, donors backed out, the concept artist cut ties with the game, and the project was canceled shortly before fundraising ended. End of story, right? I thought so too. 
until I dug a little deeper. Initially, I thought that Dark Skies was conceived by some randos who wanted to take advantage of bronies. But during my research, the term million dollar extreme kept popping up and I investigated them. Million Dollar Extreme, or MDE for short, is an American comedy collective that specializes in trolling, pranks, and anti-humor. Their most notorious member is Sam Hyde, who was the ringleader behind two faux presentations, 2012's An Inconvenient Anime and 2013's 2070 Paradigm Shift. The latter actually occurred at a TEDx conference and thus received national attention. And as someone who is not particularly fond of TED Talks, it's actually kind of funny, not gonna lie. <laughs> and that same sense of... <sighs> and that same sense of childlike play and innocence MDE tends to satirize nerd culture a lot, but one thing I didn't understand was why bronies? Why a Kickstarter of some dating sim? We have to go deeper. At some point in late 2013 or early 2014, the records have been wiped, so I'm not 100% sure, Sam made a post on the NDE Facebook page asking for people with game design and art experience for a Project Mayhem. He promised big game. Sam here. I just woke up with a cold sweat. I feel like I've already pulled off the ultimate burglary and I'm currently in the holy shit I did it to take a caught phase. If you are a Sam Hyde aficionado, you would be pleased to hear that the next ship brain half big fiasco I've involved myself in will be the most extravagant one yet. When it's released, a lot of people are going to be furious. A lot of people are going to be laughing their asses off, clapping with a tear in their eye. Proud of the young lad. For the next phase of this little project, I'm gonna need some people with impressive credentials in the realms of game design, anime, My Little Pony, illustration, someone reading this has to run a brony blog with big readership, or maybe you've designed a popular indie game, or you make anime vlogs that are popular. I don't know what the fuck crazy shit you guys get into, but I'm gonna need a quick endorsement from people like that. It won't take long at all, and it'll be the icing on the cake for Project Mayhem. Get at me. He ended up contacting an outside source unfamiliar with MDE for the pony art, Brittany Ledbetter, aka Pukey Pony. She later recounted her experience with them in an interview. Tell me, how did you get involved in the project? I was contacted by Sam Hyde through Tumblr and then DA. At first, I was a bit suspicious, as I would be to any big project that I'm asked to do. However, when he preemptively sent me the first payment of $200, I thought that it seemed more reasonable that this was a real game being developed. Admittedly, I was very naive. I think that it was both the prospect of being able to get involved with something I've always wanted to do, concept art for a video game, and getting paid more money than I ever had for an art piece that clouded my otherwise pretty reasonable judgment. And, uh, how did they describe the project to you? What, what did they tell you about it? I was told pretty much the same thing as what was on the Kickstarter, that it is a PG-13 brony dating sim that will possibly have more RPG elements added if it was well received. I was also told that my art would be used mostly as concept art, and that in the final project, it would be rendered with 3D graphics by another artist. I was sent brief descriptions of the characters and the roles they were to play in the game. I know a lot of people find the characters cheesy, and I don't disagree with this, but I thought that the characters' cheesiness was charming, and I enjoyed creating images for them. I was also given a description for a world map accompanied with sketches that I worked on for some time, but was later ditched for an impending deadline. In fact, through the whole process, I was encouraged to work quickly and often given incentives to do so. Did they make you sign a non-disclosure agreement or some other contract? 
No official contract, but there were a few agreements made through email exchange. I was told to wait until the Kickstarter went up to post artwork or talk about the game, and we also had an agreement that the artwork in my gallery that was used for commissions and contest prizes were to have the cutie marks removed and be recolored for the promotional images only. Unfortunately, they only followed about half of that. So when did you start having your suspicions? When the time came for the Kickstarter to go up, I had suspicions. In particular, I was told that Sam's identity was withheld because he was a teacher and didn't know how his students would feel about him being a brownie. I wasn't told about this until a couple of days before the Kickstarter, and it seemed to dawn on me that I was being lied to. A couple of days after the Kickstarter began, I started to receive messages through DA that the rest of the cast was entirely comprised of people linked to MDE. Upon taking a second look at the Kickstarter, I realized that it wasn't just a scam, but it was obviously a scam. There were nods to MDE fan stands, such as this bizarre font, the creator being from Falls River, Massachusetts, and references to MDE members and affiliates on the developer list. They also didn't explain why weapons and spells were relevant to the dating sim and claimed the game was in development for four years despite it being March 2014. And for perfectionists, they seem to like to not use color theory, use too many fonts, use weird 3D graphics that aren't aesthetically pleasing, and again, not have a demo. Even Yandere Dev guaranteed a playable demo before he launched a crowdfunding campaign. It's as the old saying goes, if it's too good to be true, then it's probably a troll trying to scam the shit out of you. But it worked. Dozens of people backed the game with two at the highest level. Hell, fucking iDubs was tricked into thinking that it was either real or that it was some rando who wanted free money and thus made a scam. Uh, my name is Googie Boogie, but none of the other ponies like me. I think it's because I got all sorts of boogies. But you'll be my friend, right? Because you like boogies. Yeah, that video has since been deleted by him. I think it was out of embarrassment that he didn't realize it was an MDE ploy. But alas, the normies were too smart for them, and they quickly deduced that the project was fraudulent. The Kickstarter was canceled when enough word of its falsehoods came around, if I recall correctly, and nothing of value was lost. Or was it? On one of the still existing MDE channels, Sam Hyde made a video on Dark Skies at around April 2014. It's a re-upload, so I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, he pretty much confirms that the project was a scam. Trust me, when you fire this game up, your little fucking nuts are gonna start quaking, buddy. Whoa, this is weird, what? MDE's own James Price did the music for this? What? So from my research, it looks like they were gonna make something, but something of the quality of, say, 2015 Yandere Simulator. Brittany Ledbetter and some other folks tried to make Dark Skies a reality and made some good progress, but alas, it seems that the project has died and the concept has died with it. And MDE? One member got doxxed during Gamergate and the rest of them faded away after they made one season of an Adult Swim show. Oh yeah, they had a show on um, Adult Swim? We'll get to that another day. But they left a nasty aftertaste. You see, Sam Hyde donated $5,000 to the Daily Stormer for their legal fees in an incident a couple years back. He also believed that Adult Swim canceled him for being a Trump supporter, mocked the Holocaust, and more. He's still kinda around mostly to be accused of various shootings. 
spew some typical alt-right kiwi forums-esque bullshit and make bizarre videos on a channel with under 100,000 subscribers. Other than that, he seems to have disappeared. C'est la vie. I'm sure you didn't expect this video to veer into some disgusting ass shit. And I didn't either. I apologize for that. But I couldn't make an accurate Dark Skies video without talking about MDE and its ringleader. But thanks for bearing with me. I promise next month's video will be much more lighthearted. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. Now, if you could excuse me, I'm off to burn the brony merch I bought specifically for this video. Happy Valentine's Day! When you're off with devastation, there's a simple explanation. You're a toy maker's creation, trapped inside his pocket watch. And whichever way he takes it, know that we must be resilient. We won't let them break our spirits as we sing this silly song. When I was a little filly, a gathering blaze overtook my city, so they shipped me off to the orphanage. Said, Get their shirts if you want to fit in. So I dug a one thousand holes and cut a rug with orphan holes. No memories are blurred, and they're just so obscure, but I still know the worst this song. When your fate has been entangled and your love points have been mangled, listen to the jingle jangle of my magic tambourine. Cause these girls are hypnotizing and the horrors harmonizing. So please, children, stop your crying and just sing along with me.